In the shadows of Morkdor, the Dark Lord Sauron forged the One Ring to enslave all elves, dwarves, and men of Middle-earth. The free people of Middle-earth overthrew Sauron, but lost the Ring. Now the enemy has returned, and from his dark tower in Morkdor, he seeks his Ring. We must find the ring first, and destroy it. But who can bear to carry the ring? The weak would be corrupted. Precious. <laughs> the powerful would become as great a threat as Sauron. But who can bear the ring? Welcome back, Gandalf. Will we have fireworks, elvish lessons, tales of ancient Numenor? Today, we must talk about a shadow of the past. The ring you inherited may be very dangerous. Uncle Bilbo's magic ring? Magic rings, as you call them, were made by elves. But this ring, I think, was made by another. Give me the ring. <laughs> no! Look closely. I see fine lines. Lines of fire. In a flowing script. What does it say? One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, bind them. This is the one ring to rule them all. The ancient kings of elves, dwarves, and men use the rings of power to rule their lands. The Dark Lord Sauron created this ring to rule all the others. When he fell in battle, he lost it. A strange creature called Gollum found the ring and was corrupted by it. Bilbo won it from Gollum, and now it is yours. But the Lord of the Rings has returned, and all his thought is bent on finding the ring. Let's destroy it. It can only be destroyed when it was forged, in Mount Doom, the Fire Mountain in Mordor. Take it there. Take it. No, do not tempt me. If I bore the ring, I would become like the Dark Lord himself. Then... then I must guard the ring. And I will help you bear this burden, as long as it is yours to bear. I'm a danger to the Shire. I must leave. I could set out on the road just like Bilbo. My dear Frodo, hobbits really are amazing creatures. But you need not go alone, if there are any you can trust. But take care. The enemy has many spies. Ah. Well then, Samwise Gamgee, isn't it? Ah, don't hurt me! What are you doing at Bag End? Nothing, sir. Uh, trimming the grass under the window. Oh? The sound of shears stopped some time ago. How long have you been eavesdropping? Eavesdropping? Uh, there ain't no eaves at Bag End. Don't be a fool. What have you heard? <coughs> oh, Frodo, D don't let him turn me into anything unnatural. He won't hurt you. Just answer his question. Well... I heard a lot I didn't understand about lords and rings in the fiery mountain. And elves, sir. I had to listen. I dearly love to see elves. Keep it a secret, Sam. Or I hope Gandalf turns you into a spotted toad. I've thought of something better. He will go away with you, Frodo. Me, sir? Go and see elves and all? <laughs> Hooray! But where should we go? Towards danger, but not too rashly, nor too straight. And you mustn't vanish. Take time to settle your affairs before you leave. I could leave in autumn, on my birthday. Very well, but no later. Make for Rivendell in the east, and seek the council of Elrond Half-Elven. East? 
I'll tell everyone I'm buying a house in Crick Hollow near my relatives in Buckland. I'll have to sell Bag End. The Sackville Bagginses have been trying to take over this place for years. A shame to let them have it. Indeed. And now I must go. I have much to attend to. As do I. See that Samwise Gamgee does not talk, or I will turn him into a spotted toad. You can trust Sam. Oh, yes! Not a word from Sam Gamgee, and that's for certain. Once you leave, travel as Mr. Underhill. The name of Baggins is not safe outside the Shire. And do not use the ring, for it can corrupt the most innocent heart. I understand. Farewell, Gandalf. <laughs> elves! <laughs> I'm going to see elves! Farewell, Frodo. I'll return by your birthday. But Gandalf did not come back, and as the nights grew longer, I decided I might have to leave without him. On the morning of my birthday, September 22nd, I set out for one final stroll around the Shire. I had to say farewell to my neighbors and sell my home to Lobelia Sackville Baggins. Mr. Frodo. Good morning, Sam. All ready to set out for Buckland? Already? Or will be as soon as I tend to Bag End. Lobelia Sackville Baggins is buying the place. You don't need to weed Bag End ever again. I'd like to weed them Sackville Bagginses out of Bag End, if you get my meaning. No, I've got to weed that garden one last time, Frodo. Say my goodbyes to it. Set it to rights before Lotho and Lobelia ruin it. Bag End has the best garden in the Shire, thanks to your work. Oh, <laughs> No, I I'm sure there are many finer. Oh, Mary Brandybuck said he was meeting Pippin Took at the Green Dragon and invited you to join. They took a long walk out here just for a drink. I wonder what mischief they're up to. Begging your pardon, sir, but there's little mischief to be found in the Green Dragon. The Keeper won't stand for it. We will see.
Will I see another springtime festival around this maypole? Hello, Lobelia. Where's the sheriff? Where's that lazy Robin Smallborough? I couldn't say. Now about Bag End. Never you mind all that. There are wolves in the Shire. I'm sure the sheriff is keeping everyone safe. How could he? I haven't told him about the wolves yet. Go away, Frodo. I need the sheriff. Just ring the warning bell. If he's anywhere in Bywater, he'll come running. Don't just hang about then. Ring the warning bell. rung the warning bell. Now what's going on? I don't hold with reckless bell ringing. I rang the bell. Lobelia wants you to know there are wolves in the Shire. Oh, is that all? I've heard that rumor, but I reckon no one's seen these wolves. Not even Lobelia. Oh. If any wolves approach the Shire, the Bounders will chase them off, just as they chase away foxes and such. I'm glad the Shire is well protected. Now if that's all, I've got a mug to return to in the Green Dragon. Someone finally came to his senses and rang that bell. Now we'll have safety and order in the Shire. I do hope so. Now then, what did you want to speak to me about? Make it snappy, I have a lot of things to tend to. It's about Bag End. You said you wanted to buy it. What? But I thought you were lying, you deceitful boy. I believe that when I have the deed in my hand. Did you bring it? Here's the deed to Bag End. Oh. I can scarcely believe it! The deed to Bag End! I shall need to remove a few belongings. I'll leave the Bag End key with Master Gamgee of Number 3 Bagshot Row, if you don't mind. What? Gamgee? That dirty potato grubber and his son might plunder all of Bag End in the dead of night! Good day, Lobelia. Yes! Yes! A very good day indeed! My sweet little Lothar will be so happy! Bag End at last! Oh. Why you consort with that kind, I'll never know, Frodo. Having farmers and dwarves and wizards for company, and never inviting your own flesh and blood to tea. Honestly. I think it's time for me, and the ring, to leave Hobbiton and begin this journey.
All in black. No, Mr. Bogans has gone away. <laughs> Left this morning. Why did Baggins go? Why is none of my business? Or yours? That's no secret. He's walking to Buckleberry or some such place. Is this place far from here? Yes, quite a ways down the East Road. Never been so far myself. They're a strange lot in Buckley. Can you send a message? No, I can't give no message. Now, good night to you. Good evening to you, Fredo. A peculiar rider came asking after you. I don't wish to make his acquaintance. Nor me. Sent shivers up my back just to hear his hollow voice. Where's Sam? He was waiting for you. But that dreaded Pippin Toot came to collect him. Said they would meet you at Maggot's Farm. There's something about a shortcut. What are they up to? They didn't say. But Pippin seemed quite pleased with himself. And Sam was none too happy about it. He better not be up to mischief. Well, here's the bag end key for Lobelia. I guess I'll meet Sam at Maggot's farm. Good evening, Master Gamgee. Hold on, Robin. Frodo, look out!
must stay hidden. Sluggard. What kept you, cousin? Stop by the Green Dragon on your way out? Never mind why, but I can't stay. I have to leave right now for Crick Hollow. You mean Rivendell, and we're coming with you. You thought you were so clever, but our conspiracy outsmarted you. We know all about the Ring and the Dark Lord, so we're going to protect you. But how did you know? How could we not know? With you muttering, will I ever see that valley again? You really have the Sackville Bagginses to thank. I was practicing sneaking up on Bilbo one day when he heard Lotho calling after him. Bilbo put on the ring and vanished. We kept our eyes open after that. We spied on you and Gandalf. How? Oh, through our chief conspirator. Until he got caught. And Gandalf did say, take those as you can trust. It seems I can't trust anyone. You can trust us to stick with you to the bitter end. We've kept your secret better than you did. But you can't trust us to let you face danger alone. Even though we're horribly afraid, we're coming with you. Or following after like hounds. Dogs! No, Sam. Hounds. Maggots, dogs! They're coming! Rip! Fang! Woof! Come on, lads! And old maggot, too, by the sound of it. So much for stealing some mushrooms before we go. What's all this chatter at this hour of the night? Speak up! Good evening, Mr. Maggot! Well, if it isn't Peregrine Took. You're lucky I know you, but I was about to set my dogs loose. The most outlandish fellow rode through here, asking strange questions. Here, who's that with you, Pippin? Well, you remember Meriadoc Brandybuck. Allow me to introduce Samwise Gamgee and... Frodo Baggins! Oh. Good to see you again, sir. Baggins. Now, isn't that strangest of all? What do you think that stranger was asking about? He came riding up on a black horse in black cloak and hood, and he asked for Baggins. Oh, that would be a different Baggins. I told him all the Bagginses are in Hobbiton. He says Baggins is heading east on foot. And now Frodo Baggins shows up on my farm. The same Frodo Baggins who was one of the worst young rascals around, I might add. Frodo's much better behaved these days. Where are you headed? To my new home in Crick Hollow. I can see you're in trouble, Frodo. You should never have gotten mixed up with those strange Hobbiton folk. I wager that Outlander has come for the gold Bilbo brought back from foreign parts. Well, I think it's time we were going. No, he'll be waiting. You will ride out in my wagon, hidden from sight. Thank you, sir. It's a pity I've been in terror of your dogs. I've missed a good friend. Indeed! Shall we go now? I'm ready in the wagon. Farmer Maggot's wagon carried us safely away from his farm and into the borders of Buckland. But the Black Rider was still thundering along the East Road. We decided to go south and cut through the Old Forest. Mary had been in the Old Forest and knew a little of its ways. It's a dark, mysterious place but not as dangerous as a black rider. Hello? Mary? Pippin? Sam? Where are you? 
Oi! Frodo! We're over here. And lost by the looks of it. These trees have a mind of their own. Stay where you are. I'll find you.
never thought potatoes could smell so good. A good meal will definitely ease my mind about this place. But where is this place? Very close to the Withy Window Valley. But we shouldn't get any closer. Why not? The Withy Window Valley is said to be the strangest part of the whole forest. The center from which all the strangeness comes, as it were. Can you lead us around the valley, Mary? I thought I could, but the way these trees shift about, I don't know, it's, it's like they're leading us there. Mary thought he knew his way around this forest, but how can anyone find their way when the forest won't stand still? Do you know one of those trees stuck a branch out at me? Nearly tripped me, it did. I'm sorry I led us into such a dangerous place, but at least we've shaken off that black rider. Flies. I don't like this tree. I don't trust it. Hear it singing about sleep? That's not right. It's not right at all. We can't sleep yet. We must get clear of this place. Fellows, 
Where be you a-going to, eh? Huh? Puffing like a bellows. What's the matter, then? Come now, tell me what's your trouble. My friends are caught in that willow tree. Old man, willow? I know the rhyme for him. I'll chant his marrow coal if he don't behave himself. You let them out again, old man willow. You should not be waking. Eat earth, drink water, go to sleep. Bombadil is talking. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Well, my little fellows, you shall come to the house of Tom Bombadil. Where? Time enough for questions around the supper table. Come now, and help Tom find lilies for fair Lady Goldberry. After that, we shall sit down to a table laden with cream, honeycomb, and white bread and butter. What are we waiting for? The sooner we find lilies, the sooner we can eat.
Come. Come, dear folk, laugh and be merry. I am Goldberry, daughter of the river. Here's my Goldberry. You are still afraid, perhaps, of mist and tree shadows. Fear nothing, for tonight you are under the roof of Tom Bombadil. Who are you? Eh, what? Don't you know my name? It's the only answer. For who are you without your name? But you are young and I am old. Eldest, that's what I am. Tom was here before the river and the trees. Tom remembers the first raindrop, the first big people, and the first little people. He was here before kings and barrow whites, before the elves passed westward, and before the seas were bent, before the Dark Lord came from outside. His precious ring has no power over Tom Bombadil. And now, merry friends, it is time for our supper. We ate our first good meal in a long time, singing songs and telling tales until late in the night. We slept peacefully and were refreshed enough to continue our journey. Keep to the green grass as you go, lads. Don't go meddling with old stone or prying into the houses of old dead Barrowites. Here's a song to sing should you fall into any danger. Oh, Tom Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, oh, by water, wood and hill, by the reed and willow, oh, by fire, sun and moon, Hearken now and hear us, come Tom Bombadil, for our need is near us. Thank you, Tom Bombadil. Speed now, fair guests. North with the wind in the left eye and a blessing on your footsteps. Make haste while the sun shines. Farewell, friends. It was a merry meeting. Keep to the green grass as you go, lads. Don't go meddling with old stone or prying into the houses of old dead Barrowites. Speed now, fair guests. North with the wind in the left eye and a blessing on your footsteps. Make haste while the sun shines.
Something is cautious about this place. We're not far from the main road by my reckoning. Splendid. If we keep this pace, we'll leave the Barrow Downs by sunset tomorrow. Not soon enough for my liking. I don't trust what's hiding in the fog on the Barrow Downs. <laughs> you don't believe stories about old dead Barrow Whites. Not until today. But Tom said otherwise. Tom is the only one not affected by the ring. I wonder why. He was here before the Dark Lord came from outside. Outside what, I wonder? And whatever did he mean by eldest? And why didn't he serve bacon, or cutlets, or sausages? Well, I don't like spending the night among these burial stones. They look like giant teeth coming up from the ground. If half the stories I've heard about the Barrow Downs are true, We'll need to keep a careful watch. Enough storytelling. Let's get to sleep. Sam? Mary? Pippin? Where are you? Where could they be? Sam? Mary? Anyone? Where are you? Indeed.
listen to Tom. Wait, perhaps Tom is near. Ho, oh, Tom Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, oh. By water, wood, and hill, by the reed and the willow, by fire, sun, and moon. Hearken now and hear us. Come, Tom Bombadil, for our need is near us. Well, little friends, old Tom has answered your call. Get out, old white, vanish in the sunlight. Shrivel like the cold mist till the world is mended. Out into the barren lands, far beyond the mountains. Come never here again. Leave your barrow empty, lost and forgotten be, darker than the darkness, where gates stand forever shut, till the world is mended. Thank you, Tom. The spell on this barrow lies broken, and no white shall ever come back to it. I've scattered the barrow's treasures. They're free to all finders. Old Tom has taken a pretty toy for his lady, and here are some fine blades for young hobbits who go walking into dark and danger. It's perfectly clean, untouched by time. Yes, thank you again. They were forged long ago by the men of Westerness across the sea in ancient Numenor. They cast spells on their blades for the bane of the Dark Lord. Their kings of Numenor are forgotten now, but their sons wander in loneliness, guarding simple folk from wicked things. I wonder if this blade can hurt one of the Black Riders. Old Tom shall see you safe over the borders of his land. From there you should travel to Bree, a fair village. Stay the night at the Prancing Pony Inn. Fair advice. Lead the way. Ready to follow Tom, then? Indeed. The further we are from the Barrows, the better. Let us speed on our way! We left the cold stone fields of the Barrow Downs and arrived at the hillside village of Bree, home to both hobbits and big folk. We said goodbye to Tom and entered Bree, seeking a warm fire and a door between us and the night. At last we found a cheerful inn with the sign of the Prancing Pony. We surely aren't staying in this inn, are we? Why not? Tom recommended it. I thought we might see about staying with some of the Bree Hobbits. It'd be more home-like. Oh, Sam. This is as good as an inn back home. Just a lot larger. The larger the inn, the larger the meals. Don't worry, Sam. This will be fine. Maybe Sam can find a tater patch to sleep in. I'll make arrangements with the innkeeper while you three find something to eat. And remember, from now on, my name is Mr. Underhill. Right. Come on, Sam. Pippin. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Underhill. I'd like to give you a word of advice, young hobbit. Oh? There are some dangerous folks about tonight. I hope you stay safe. I'm sure I will. So do I. Enjoy your stay. I still don't like the look of this place. We'll be gone soon enough, Sam. Don't worry. That is my worry if you follow me, sir. We'll be gone. Gone for good. <laughs> we should have come here long ago. Good food and excellent drink. Don't get too comfortable. Things could change. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Until then, I shall rest my weary feet and enjoy the local hospitality. Good evening to you. Pleased to meet you. My name is Underhill. Is this your first time in an inn, Mr. Underhill? No, that is to say, it's my first time in this inn. <laughs> I see. Well, if you're planning on staying here, you should check with the innkeep. Wait too long and you'll be sleeping in the stables. Right. Thank you for the advice. Are 
I don't like you hobbits much. Hello. I'd like to... Half a minute, if you please. Nob, where are you? With customers. Step lively. Now then, good evening, little master. Balaman Butterbur at your service. What may you be wanting? Room for four, please. You're from the Shire, from the sound of you. We don't get many from the Shire nowadays. Shire. Now, what does that remind me of? Might I ask your name? Mr. Underhill. I'm run off my feet with all these travellers tonight. There's a crowd in the house tonight as there hasn't been in long years. Lucky you're a hobbit. That's the only kind of room we have left. Here's your key, then. Nob! Nob, you woolly-footed slow coach. Where are you? Here, sir. Here I am. Where's Bob? Find him double sharp. He's got some ponies to stable straight away. I'll get right on it, sir. You'll excuse me, sir, but I've a party of dwarves to tend to and all these strangers coming up the greenway from the south. Busy days, these. Ever. Fireworks that only a wizard could make. <laughs> oh, Bilbo starts a long, boring speech, but he has a trick up his sleeve, <laughs> or in his pocket. Mr. Underhill, I'd ever. stop your friend from Fireworks talking if I were you. <laughs> so Bilbo says to the 144 hobbits at the party, you are one gross of hobbits. <laughs> Everyone's so offended, they don't see his hand go into his pocket. You'd better do something quick. People of Bree, thank you for your gracious reception. <laughs> Let's have a song. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm getting to the good part. Very well, then. A song. There is an inn, a merry old inn, beneath an old grey hill. And there they make a stew so brown that the man in the moon himself flew down at night to eat his fill. Uh, uh, oh. Where did he go? Sorcery! Bah! Conjurer's trick, that's all. <laughs> right, and a fine trick it was. What you did was worse than anything your friend could have said. It was an accident. I want a word with you somewhere quiet. Hello. Who are you? And uh, what do you want? I am called Strider. And if what I say is helpful to you, I want you to take me with you. I would not agree to any such thing until I knew a lot more about you. Excellent. You seem to be coming to your senses again after your accident. Begging your pardon, I need a word. Everyone in this place needs a word. I remembered what it was I forgot. What? About a shire hobbit named Baggins, but called Underhill. Who told you this? Gandalf the wizard. He asked me to send this letter to you in the Shire, but I forgot. I expect he'll turn me into a block of wood. Dear Frodo, bad news. You must leave for Rivendell before the end of July. Do not wait for your birthday. I will meet you if I can, or follow you if I can't. You can trust the ranger called Strider, but make sure he's the real Strider. His true name is Aragorn. I am Aragorn. Son of Arathorn, and if by life or death I can save you, I will. I thought I would have to persuade you without proof, but my looks are against me. I believed you, or I wanted to. The enemy spies look fair but feel foul, while you feel fair... But look foul? <laughs> Hold on. Where's Mary? He's still not back from his walk. Stay here. I'll find him.
tunnels are all closed off. I got to get them clean before the boss has my head. Shanks, none of your concern, horse thief. What? You're gonna call me a horse thief? I already have. Now be gone. You've stuck your nose in the wrong place. I've seen you talking to the Shire Axe. You want the reward for baggins all to yourself. But you won't get it. Strider. I am a friend of Gandalf. Very well, friend. What should we do now? Return to the inn and find your friends. Tell Butterbur to lodge you in my quarters. What about you? I think it's time to throw these enemies off the scent. Beg your pardon? I'm going to collect some items to make decoys of you hobbits. You'll see. You must come with me. I'll see you safely back to the inn. I do appreciate it. These streets have suddenly become rather unfriendly. Come along. <laughs> That's my business. It's my business now. You'll beg to tell me after my friends work you over. <laughs>
dark. You little mouse. Talk or I'll make you squeak. I don't know, no baggins. I swear it. Little mousey's about to get his airy foot in a rat trap. Bold words for a filthy orc son of Mordor. Ah, I'll make you squeak too, wanderer. Open. Black Riders, I hope this plan works. You should sleep, all of you. I'll keep watching the night. We leave at dawn. Where will we go? Toward Rivendell, but not by the main road. Ah, I should have known. More shortcuts and long delays. The last time we tried that, we were almost eaten by a tree. My shortcuts don't go wrong. Early the next morning, I led the four hobbits safely out of Bree and into the troll-haunted wilderness beyond. We approached the hill that the elves call Amon Sul and that men call Weathertop. Strider, what's that light? I'm not certain. It's too distant to make out. But it appears to be coming from Weathertop. It's like lightning. We'll know more once we reach Weathertop. We need to reach Weathertop's summit quickly. If Gandalf is following, he'll go there to look for us. We might find Gandalf there. The hope is faint, and he's even less likely to find us on the paths I take through the wilderness. Perhaps the Black Riders won't find us in the wilderness either. Frodo, Samwise, come with me. Lead the way, Aragorn.
struggle took place within them. Look at this cairnstone. There are runes on it. It appears to be a G and a 3. G for Gandalf. And the 3 might mean a date. October 3rd was not long ago. Gandalf was here. If he was, he left in a hurry. Perhaps he ran into trolls. Or worse. <laughs> East Road. Dark Riders. <sighs> Merry and Pippin are down there. Back to the camp, quickly! Frodo's wounded. I must protect him.
I'll go ahead and clear the way of trolls. Stay out of harm's way and stay close to Frodo. I'll follow the best I can. We'll take care of him. Don't you worry about that.
rider approaches. So I see. I na veduwi do na dan. An elf! Maidovan and Melon. What did he just say? Well met, friend. Or at least I think so. This is Glorfindel, of the House of Elrond, in Rivendell. Hail, and well met at last! We were told to look for you. By Gandalf? No. Elrond received news of you from elves traveling near the Shire. As soon as he learned things were amiss, he sent out riders in all directions. Here. Frodo has a Morgul wound. He must get to Rivendell. Then he shall ride my horse, Asphalon. His pace is smooth, and he'll let no rider fall from his back. Fly! The enemy is upon us! Fly to the ford! Ride on! Norolim! Norolim, Asphaloth! Elrond's command, the waters of the River Bruinen swept the ringwraiths away. We entered the hidden elven valley of Rivendell. Elrond, the Lord of Rivendell, healed the wound made by the Morgul blade. Frodo awoke to a familiar face. Yes, I am here. And you are lucky to be anywhere, after all the absurd things you've done. Then we made it. But we needed you, Gandalf. I was held captive by the treachery of Saruman the White, the chief of the wizards. But now I am free, and astonished that you brought the ring all this way. Hobbit seemed especially resistant to the evil of the ring. Thank you for sending Aragorn. I didn't know he could fight ring wraiths. I thought he was only a ranger. Only a ranger? My dear Frodo, rangers are the last remnant of the kings of ancient Numenor, but now your part in the quest of Mount Doom is complete. You shall hear all about it in many meetings. You are to be the guest at the Council of Elrond. My friends, this is the Hobbit, Frodo, son of Drogo. He has sacrificed much to bring the One Ring to Rivendell. Frodo, these are leaders of the free peoples of Middle-earth. Gimli, son of Glawin of the Dwarf Kingdom of Erebor, where the Dark Lord Sauron threatens invasion. Legolas, son of Thrandul, King of the Wood Elves. They fight Sauron's forces in Mirkwood Forest. Boromir, son of the Steward of Gondor. The men of Gondor suffer great losses to protect us all from Sauron's armies. Sauron's power is tied to this ring. We must carry it deep into Mordor and destroy it in the fires of Mount Doom. Destroy it? You would deliver our greatest weapon right to the doorstep of our enemy? We cannot use it. It corrupts all who bear it. The more powerful the bearer, the more dangerous they will become. I fear to take the ring to hide it. I will not take the ring to wield it. A dark riddle. Those powerful enough to enter Mordor dare not touch the ring. Powerful enough to enter Mordor? All the armies of Middle-earth joined together could not enter Mordor! A small force with stealth may succeed where a large army would fail. Elves have tried to join with dwarves against Sauron, but the dwarves prefer to hide in their dark caves counting their treasures. At least dwarves are not fleeing Middle-earth! But elves are sailing away to the safety of the West during our darkest hour! Enough! I say we use the ring as a weapon, for none of you is powerful enough to bear the ring to Mordor. I will take the ring. 
though I do not know the way. I think this task has been appointed for you, Frodo. If you do not find the way, no one will. You won't send him alone? No, indeed, since it is not possible to separate you from him, Sam Ganji. Gandalf shall lead a fellowship of free people against Sauron. Nine walkers against Sauron and his nine riders. Legolas shall be for the elves and Gimli for the dwarves. For men, there shall be Aragorn and Boromir of Gondor. For the remaining two, I shall call for great heroes like... Merry and Pippin, hobbits of free people too. You cannot begin to imagine the danger ahead. Neither can Frodo, and neither can I. Even the greatest lords of the elves could not force open a passage through Mordor. I would rather trust hobbit friendship than ancient power. Very well, then. The Fellowship of the Ring shall set forth to Mordor. When you saw fire and lightning on Weathertop, you saw the effects of my battle with the Ringwraiths. Had I been three days later, I would have met you. The time has not yet come for you to leave Rivendell. Renewed shall be the blade that was broken. The crownless again shall be king. The elven smiths have reforged Narsil. The blade of my ancestors. You have done me a great honor. You do us honor to carry it against our common enemy, Aragorn, son of Arathorn, son of the kings of Numenor. It shall have a new name. Anduril, Flame of the West. May it see the end of the Dark Lord, and then see you safely back to me, my love. You have my thanks, Arwen Andumiel. And my love. My Govanum, Melon. Elrond chose your companions well, Frodo. We shall not fail you. Well met to you as well, friend. Your path will be an arduous one, Mingbearer. May the stars shine upon your face. We have learned that the strange creature called Gollum told the Dark Lord that Baggins of the Shire took the ring. My father, Gloin, travel his brave. Hello, Bilbo. It looks like we'll be going soon. I wanted to stop by and say goodbye. There you are, Frodo, my lad. I've some gifts for you, for use on the road ahead. First, there is Steam, the blade of an elven prince. You'll need it, I wager. This is a mithril shirt from the Dragon Treasure. Very light, but stronger than any steel. Thank you for all you have done to help me. Help you? I've brought a terrible doom upon you. I would take the silly old ring myself, but without it, the years have caught up with me. I'm not well-preserved anymore. As you once said, the old that is strong does not wither. You should heed your own words. Ah, yes. Take care of yourself, Frodo, and bring back all the news you can. I'm writing a book about your adventure. Take care of yourself, Uncle Bilbo. I'll bring back all the news I can, and old songs and tales as well. It was December when we set forth on the road to Mordor, traveling through the ancient land of Holland. We were beset on all sides by Sauron's power, for birds and beasts and even weather could be bent to the wheel of Sauron. The Dark Lord hurled a raging snowstorm as we tried to cross the great mountain Carathras. We forged on until an avalanche forced us to quit the mountain and seek another path. Carathras has defeated us. Should we turn back? There is no safety for the ring in Rivendell. Where do we go? There is another path, the Mines of Moria. That is a name of ill omen. But in Gondor, we will have strong allies. 
The enemy expects that, so the ring must not go near Gondor. I shall follow you to Moria and look upon the great underground city of Khazad Doom. I will go, but I say to you all, beware the secrets of Moria. I will not go, unless the vote of the whole company is against me. The ring bearer's voice should be heard. I do not wish to go, but I do not wish to forsake the Council of Gandalf either. We must reach Moria, and soon. Gandalf speaks true. Our troubles may get worse, and sooner than we like.
We have come to the west gate of Moria. Here, the elven land of Holland ended. There is a gate here. Dwarf doors are not made to be seen when shut. Behold. What does the writing say? It reads, The doors of Dudin, Lord of Moria. Speak, friend, and enter. What does it mean, speak, friend, and enter? If you are a friend, speak the password to open the doors. Do you know the word, Gandalf? If I am allowed a bit of peace, I shall seek for the word.
Let us rest while we can. How long will it take to get through this place? I cannot say for certain. Three or four days march, providing we don't get lost or run into trouble. Trouble? Uh, what kind of trouble? Orc trouble. Moria is vast and deep. With luck, we can avoid all the orcs. Our luck seems to be running sour of late. Perhaps you would have preferred to remain behind with that thing in the lake? Uh, not me, Mr. Gimli. Not that thing or those wolves. I'll take my chances in here.
rest, Gandalf. This seems like a sound place to camp. I agree. This is as good a place as any nearby. Very well, Gimli. We shall camp here, but not for long. Orcs are on the prowl. Something is following us, quietly, in the dark.
like a good place to rest. Stay away from that well, though. Who knows what is swimming around down there, looking for a meal? Well, you're a small catch, Sam. It would probably throw you back. Pippin, that's not a... Good idea. Fool of a duke. Throw yourself in next time, and we'll be done with you. Listen, what's that sound? It sounds like a hammer. Someone down there is sending signals. We'll need to move on, and soon, before the orcs come. of Moria will be safely behind us. I hope you're right, as do I. I grow weary of this place. It is so cold and dark. Where are we exactly, Mr. Gandalf? I believe we're in the upper halls, perhaps the 20th or 21st. They've been well looted and have little interest to the orcs. They prefer the lower levels, despite the shadow of fear that covers them. Uh, fear of what? Durin's bane. A dark creature unleashed long ago by dwarves seeking Mithril. They delve too greedily and too deep. Enough talk of the past. It is the present that concerns me. Do we rest or move on? I don't think we have a choice. Cave trolls! <laughs>
Hurry, Gandalf. Get us out of here. I don't know how much longer we can survive. The book is a record of Balin's time in Moria. I fear the tidings are grim indeed. They met with early fortune, driving out a host of goblins. Then they discovered Nithril, the riches of Moria. It goes on to tell of Balin's death, an attack by orcs. Slowly but surely, the dwarves were driven back and trapped. The last lines read, we cannot get out. The end comes. Drums. Drums in the deep. They are coming. They made their last stand here. The effort to retake Moria was valiant, but foolish. We should be moving on. Frodo, I fear the enemy is near. I will slay the foul beasts with my axe should they attack. Let us pass through this hall and find the others on the other side. I will do my best to offer my assistance. The door there! It must lead into the hall. There must be a way to open it. Cross!
crossed! The switch! I see it on the other side! You must get to the switch, Master Frodo, so that I may cross!
We forged on, out of the dark depths of Moria, and soon we reached the Golden Wood, Lothlorien. I've not been here for many long years, but I remember the way to Karaskalothan, tree city of the elves. Elves! Be at ease. I am Haldir of Lorien. I have been following you for some time. You breathe so loud, I could shoot you in the dark. Huh? Have no fear. The Lady Galadriel is expecting you. But the dwarf is not permitted on our land. But Elrond chose him. He's brave and faithful. Very well. But he must travel blindfolded. I am no spy. I will not walk blind like a prisoner. My people do not serve the enemy. This is our law. I will go forward free. A plague on dwarves and their stiff necks. Hold. We will all go blindfolded. Ha ha ha! A merry troop of fools we shall look. I will be content if Legolas shares my blindness. But I am an elf. I am a kinsman here. Shall we say a plague on elves and their stiff necks? The company shall all fare alike. Bind us all, Haldir. So be it. I shall lead you safely to Karos Galothan, where Lord Celeborn and Lady Galadriel await you. Gandalf the Grey set out with your company. Where is he now? Alas, Lady. Gandalf fell into shadow. He did not escape Moria. In all the long years full of grievous tidings, these are the most evil. When escape seemed beyond us, he saved us, and he fell. We will hear the tale another day, for you are weary and heartsick. We will do what we can to help you, especially the one who bears the burden. Your quest stands upon the edge of a knife. Stray even a little, and it will fail to the ruin of all. Yet, hope remains while all the fellowship is true. Rest, and we will not speak of the road ahead for a while. Here is the mirror of Galadriel. I have brought you here to look in it, if you will. What will we see? Things you desire to see, and things unbidden. Things that were, are, and may yet be. I'll have a peek. There's only stars. Wait! What? It's Ted Sandyman cutting down all our trees. I'll cut him down. Oh, devilry. They've dug a bagshot row. They've run off my old gaffer. I have to go to the Shire. Would you turn from Frodo's quest? No. Do you wish to look now, Frodo? I will look. I see a land in shadows and an old man walking toward me. Gandalf? No. White robes. Saruman, there's the sea. A tall ship from the west, and a white fortress, with seven towers. Another ship, with black sails, and the emblem of a white tree. I see a great battle, and an eye, ringed with fire. I know what you saw, for it is in my mind as well. But the enemy cannot hurt you here. This land is not preserved merely by singing or arrows. Behold, Nenya, the Ring of Adamant. A ring Sauron cannot rule, unless you fail, and he gains the ring. We would be laid bare before him, yet, if you succeed, my power will diminish, and Lothlorien will fade. Which do you choose, lady? My love for my people is deeper than the sea. Yet I would cast it all away rather than submit to Sauron. I wish you to destroy the ring. I would give you the ring, if you ask for it. You would give me the ring freely? In place of the Dark Lord, you would set up a queen. And I shall not be dark, but beautiful and terrible as the morning and the night. All shall love me and despair! 
No. I pass the test. I will diminish and go into the West. And remain Galadriel. Lady Galadriel, you wear one of the rings of power. When I wear the One Ring, why can't I see into your mind or the minds of others? Because you have not tried. But I warn you not to. You would have to become far stronger and train your will to the domination of others. And then you would lose the one virtue that makes you more able to resist the ring than any of the wise and powerful. We will not speak more of it. Let us go. The next day we said farewell to Lorien. Celeborn and Galadriel gave us boats of elven make, and we set out on the great river Anduin toward Mordor. Aragorn has been gone for some time. I hope his scouting goes well. It is not Aragorn that concerns me, but you. You're the difficult path ahead. Yes. I know what I should do, but I'm afraid of doing it. And yet, do you suffer needlessly? I know you wish me to bear the ring to Gondor, and it seems like wisdom, except for the warning in my heart. What warning is that? A warning against the easy path, against the refusal of my burden, and if it must be said, against trust in the strength and truth of the big people of the world. Our strength has long protected your little shire. I do not doubt the valor of Gondor, but what if it is not enough? There is still hope that Gondor will not fall. There is no hope while the ring exists. Yes, the ring. We can use its power for good. All that is done with the ring turns to evil. All can be corrupted, some faster than others. Frodo, Boromir. Make ready. The orcs have built fortifications. What would you have us do? Wake the others and prepare to move out. Stealth may not serve us here. We may have to fight. Think of my counsel, Frodo. It is all I ask of you. We'll need to clear this shore in order to port it to the boats.
clear. Let us retrieve our boats and continue on.
the orcs. Climb to the top. I'll follow when I can.
Let's seek safety. It is time for Anduro to strike. The Fellowship of the Ring has triumphed. They have brought low the flying ring wraith. They have taken Frodo in safety to the very edge of Morgdor. So the Fellowship has succeeded. Yet I see the ring bearer alone as he crosses into the dark land. Yet, not all alone. <laughs> 